what we're doing either. But here we are. It's the Mr. Pickles and Stew Show. Welcome, everybody. Hey, hey, how's it going? It's going great. How are you, Stu? <laughs> I'm excellent. I've been doing pickle push-ups. You know oh, what yeah? those are? I, I don't want to see them, I don't think, do I? It's when you lay on the ground and you do push-ups like this. Man. It's amazing. Pretty, pretty good. <laughs> so, today, we are talking about important things in our business. And uh, one of the things that we're going to talk about is the biggest issue that your customer needs to know and how you can help them with their problem. We're going to be talking about the, that on the, uh, on the podcast. But uh, as far as what we're talking about on the Jim and Stu show, we're going to have a lively little discussion on, uh, you know, what to do when things don't flow. Yeah. Because that's like, something. Go ahead. Like right now. Oh, no, we're flowing. <laughs> no, that's that's yeah, that's that's not an issue. I I think. You know, talking about flow, and by the way, good morning, everyone. Please do uh, say hello. Give us a comment. Tell us your favorite exercise position. Uh, I know that uh, Stu's is the downward dog, is it not? What's your What's your favorite uh, exercise position? Damn, I don't even know. It's oh, a good one. Okay. I like the I like pull ups. I've I always say been fascinated with. I could only do one exercise. Hmm. Hmm. Man, that's a tough. That's a tough answer. Push up. I, I don't know. Yeah, I guess. I think it or, would or be swimming. I think swimming would be probably. That's not an exercise. That's cardio. That's an exercise too. Oh, okay. Um. Well, like muscles. I would say if you could only do one thing, because if you were in prison, you know, when, when you were in prison, right? Um, Way back when, it'd be push ups. Because you can do those in a limited space. It works on true. your core. It works on your um, your arms, your chest, your back. Yeah. Uh, so all kinds of stuff. Um, so please give us a like, a share. Give us a comment. Give us uh, oh, whatever. Yeah, people are already commenting. There nice. you go. Yeah, I like the smiley faces, the laughy faces. Your feedback. Helps us to help you. Yep. Yoga. It's a good yeah. call. So there you go. So Vicky does yank yoga. Somebody else says, I hate exercise. The army ruined me. <laughs> mm. Okay. So talking about flow. So yes. I'm going to tell a, a quick, a quick example. Uh, day before yesterday, I had to, well, I didn't have to, I don't have to do anything in this life. Stu can do whatever I want. I'm a big kid. Okay. But uh, I was doing, a session with a buddy of mine, Dean, which we do for uh, Funnel Fridays on Monday. We get on and we write sales copy live. And this week uh, on Funnel Fridays with Russell, he and I are going to be doing product launch funnels, which are pretty cool, but they're relatively complicated. Um, and so we were trying to explain in five bullets or less <laughs> in one headline. You know, why is this such a, you know, why is this important? Why is this a big deal? Why would you want to be on it? Or we're, we're writing the, uh, um, writing the opt-in page copy. And it, it just, it just wasn't flowing. It just, no matter what I did, the more I tried to force it, the more I tried to just make it work, the less it was working. And, mm -hmm. and I was getting more and more frustrated. And finally we ran out of time and I'm in, and it was over. And at the end, I felt, I mean, I felt bad. I even sent him a, um, a Voxer. I said, you know, I, I feel almost, I, I just feel like I failed. And it was, it was weird because I don't normally feel that way. And I started thinking about, he, he said, yeah, it was, it was cool though. I mean, we didn't really get into a flow. And I thought about, you know, when I've been in a flow state before and when I've not been in a flow state before. And I think that there are some things you can do to get into flow. And I think there are some things you can do if you're not in flow. Um, and so I thought we'd talk about that. But when we say flow, what does being in a flow state mean to you, 
Stu? Well, for me, it's just things are clicking, right? Okay. It's almost like I can't get what I am trying to do done fast enough because my brain is already pumping out the next sentence, the next bullet, the next, I mean, it is, it is flowing and I'm just trying to keep up with my brain. Okay. Right. So that's, and, and I would be curious, good morning, everybody. Um, please do give us a like, a share, a comment. <laughs> Thanks for and joining us. And LOL. Um, and even an LOL. So I think, well, and I'll ask everybody in the comments, what, what does being in a flow state mean to you? I think you said it well, Stu. To me, being in a flow state just means that I'm, I like what you said, I'm clicking. I, I like to say I'm firing on all cylinders and I'm, I'm moving through. And what I've also noticed when I'm on a, um, yeah, this isn't the place to ask, David. If you hmm. got a question like that, please do contact the help desk. Uh, and we'll see what we can do to, to help you out. No worries. Um, so the thing with a flow is I also notice that time acts differently. Sometimes if I'm in a flow state, I will notice that my the time it's taking me, I'll be doing something and I'll think it was like 30 minutes and it's been two hours or three hours even. I mean, it's just, it's just, you're just going, the energy, everything. Other cases, I feel like I've been doing something for two or three hours and I look down and it's only been 45 minutes. And so it's, it's weird. And it's, none of that is bad either way. If it's, if it's something that I'm doing, I'm like, damn, I've been doing this for that long. Or I've been doing something, um, you know, I've been doing something that I thought I was doing forever. And it's like, man, I got that done in 30 minutes. I got that done in 45 minutes. It's just weird. So being in that kind of a flow state. Um, so, you know, that that's one of the things that, that I notice uh, when it comes to that. So I, I would tell you this, over the last couple of weeks, one thing I have been doing is um, using the list article wizard. Mm -hmm. AKA listicle wizard. Uh -huh. um, and that has been really helping me just organize my thoughts in a way that it wasn't coming out like it normally does. So like last night, for instance, I, I got this idea to write this article and it just wasn't, there's just too many things going on. I even had a list of like the top 10 things I want to put in this list article, but mm -hmm. it still wasn't, coming out. So I just went right to the list wizard, pop, 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 pumped a whole lot of things in there and then just cut and paste it, put it right into my blog. Now I'm about to edit it this morning, you know, after the show and, uh, I'll, I'll have a new article, you know, but it, it was one of those time, you know, altering events when I was finally started hitting the flow state in the list wizard. Because I'd started it right after dinner, like seven o'clock. And I said, I'll just spend like 30 minutes on this list wizard, see what's going on. Next thing I know, I got the whole article pretty much done. Yeah. Um, and it just, you know, just flew by. And then, and then doing some other stuff too. And next thing I know, my, my clock is nine o'clock at night. I'm like, dang, working late tonight. Yeah. Um, but I didn't even realize it. You know, it was just, Pow. so yeah. Um, sometimes, you know, the wizards do help with, um, you know, helping me get into a certain amount of flow state when I normally don't write in the evening. My most productive time of writing an article is between nine o'clock and noon, you know, in the morning. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm. Typically my most productive time for doing that kind of creative stuff is, is between five and 10, five and noon, but, but pretty much after noon, and that's probably one of the reasons why I was having a problem the other day, because we were doing this at three o'clock in the afternoon, which is for me, the crappiest time to try Same. to get anything like that done. It just Same. doesn't, it just does not work. So I think one of the things that, um, and Justin, um, made a good point here to get in a flow state. I scheduled, isolate myself from distractions, visualize the feeling of being done and get after it. 
Um, that's pretty much what I do every morning. I'll schedule, you know, for sales copy and, and other stuff like that. It's critical to be able to know when your most creative time is. And I think it was Daniel Pink's book, When. I read that uh, this past February and it really changed my thoughts on it. It changed some thoughts and it confirmed some things that I knew. So one of the things that I'll do to get into a flow state is to do just what Justin said, do it during the time that you know you can actually get it done. You're not going to work out at midnight. Okay. You, right. yeah. you, know, you, you work out in at the time that's best for you to work out. I know Stu works out at six. I usually work out around seven 30. Um, so that's just when I, that's my best time to do it. I've gotten in a good chunk of work and I'm ready for a break. So I go beat the crap out of myself for an hour and a half. And then I come back and get back to work. Um, and I think some other things that I saw some people making some good content, I mean, some good comments. Sometimes if you're not in a flow state, you can, I think, force yourself to get something done. You, you, it's like you nibble around the edges of it, like, like you did with the, um, with the listicle wizard or with one of the other tools that we have where it's like, okay, I, I, I can't see myself getting the whole thing done, but let me just do a little bit. And then once you do a little bit, it's like, okay, well, let me do a little bit of this over here. And then let me do a little bit of this over here. And, and you just kind of, it's like a cookie. You keep turning it and taking little bites of the cookie until finally the cookie's gone. And that's one way I found to, to kind of simulate a flow state. Is you know, that's, that's a really, really good there. point. That's a really good point because last, like I said, last night, it, it dawned on me that the project that was floating around in my head was too big for a single article. Right. Right. And I needed to make a two or three part series of the same article, um, you know, just in different phases of, of my world. Um, because it, it was just too much going around, even after writing a list, even after, um, going on the listicle, I realized that, oh, this is what I need to do to make this three 1000 word articles. I mean, that's how much was flowing in my brain that it was, it was too much, you know? So right. sometimes you, you got to compartmentalize, take little nibbles of, of the project and realize that, you know, this isn't a one day event. Right. This isn't a single article event or whatever content you're trying to create or project that you're trying to do with work for right. that matter. Yeah. And that and, and that's creative. And that's another thing to do is to is to just step away from it for a while. Okay, I've got it this far. Let me just forget about it for a while. And a lot of times your subconscious will cook on it and you'll come back and you'll have the answer. Sometimes it's to go work out, go take yep. a walk. Sometimes it's to sleep on it for the night. Sometimes it's just go get get away from it and do something else. Uh, that's another way to to just, if you're not in the flow state, then stop trying to be in the flow state, walk away from it completely, but schedule a time to come back to it. Don't yeah. just let it go and, and forget about it without kind of knowing when you're going to come back to finish it up. You know, there's some interesting physiology, psychology phenomena going on, you know, whenever you um, are having that kind of, I call it writer's block. You can call it whatever you want. You're just obviously not in a flow state. Mm -hmm. um, for me, something that works really well is getting up from my desk, walking outside, maybe even getting in my car, running an errand or just doing something else and then coming right back 10 minutes later. Cause it, it's, there's, there's a part of your brain that is like short-term memory, mm -hmm. right? And your short-term memory will um, reset itself every time you walk in and out of a door, right? Think about this. How many times have you gone to the grocery store? You walk in the grocery store and you forget everything that you, you have to go get. <laughs> That's why I make a list. Too. Right. I mean, well, yeah, if you don't have a list, but I mean, just think about where that came from, you know, from back in our, you know, whenever we were caveman days going as a human race or human species, uh -huh. um, we, 
you know, when you walked out of that house, you had to like turn on like, boom, situational awareness, you know, you know pray or saber tooth tiger or whatever you're you. looking for. Right. There was always something, some kind of issue that you had to refocus on, you know, your survival. So it's, it's almost like a little survival skill that is still in our brains that when we walk out of the house and go do something different, it's you dump short-term memory and it, it's really hard to memorize a, a list of five things and then go walk out of the house and be at the grocery store two minutes later and try to remember it. It's. Do you have like, anything to scientifically back this up or is this just, I do. A I read a story. Thing. I read an article on it. It's, it's, oh, it, it was is on the internet scientific study. No, it was actual, a published study <laughs> okay. on short-term memory. I'll, I'll, I'll prove it to you. Where's the data. I'll um, send it. That makes sense though, from the standpoint of their cues that, you, you know, I, I, I have cues in my life. Like when it's time to work out, I, you know, when I hear this noise, you hear that? Did you hear that? I heard something, you know, when I, I hear this watch. noise, yeah, that's my stopwatch. Oh yeah. Yeah. As soon as I hear that, it's time. It's go time. It's like game beep, on, beep, beep, three, three beeps. And it means the, you know, I've got the stopwatch turned on and it's ready to go. And so when I sit down at my computer and I turn on the lights, you can't see me. You can probably see the lights go off. But when I turn on the lights like that, my brain's like, okay, it's time to get to work. So you can create cues that, that let you know that, hey, this is time to do something. It's time to, to get, get down to business. And I think that's, that's something else you can do to help get into a flow state. Um, so that would be the that would be an, another thing. So developing cues and recognizing cues you already have ingrained into you. Um, so anyway, I mean, anybody else got any other thoughts? Uh, Denise just said, "Oh, this is cool. That's the trigger that sets off a keystone habit, and a domino effect happens, and you execute an entire habit chain." Holy Ooh, crap, somebody's cool. read some books about habits and habit like stacking it. and other good no, stuff. I like good. that. Yeah. Should add Denise needs to give me her cliff notes from uh you know <laughs> some of these habit books that I read a while ago. That's good. I like that. Yeah, habits um, are essential. Yeah. So yeah. But that's the the other big thing though, is if you're not in a flow state, sometimes just get up and walk away. And and that's or do something else. And, and come back to it because the more you try and force it, uh, flow is not something that, that is, uh, can be forced a lot of times. So nibble around the edges, do what you think. So that's pretty much what I got as far as that thought today. Um, yeah. Ooh, here's a good one. This is a non-paid testimonial. When I need help getting into a flow, I grab copywriting secrets. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. Um, yeah. sometimes, but that goes with the Q thing. Sometimes if you need to get in a flow, that's why Jim Edwards met the premium traffic secret scripts, the funnel scripts, all these different things. It's a Q it's, it's a thing to help you get started because once you get started, then your mind goes, Oh, I know what we should be doing right now. And then it just, it just starts. So it, it, it does that. Yeah. Well, sometimes it's just a matter, a matter of looking for inspiration too. Like sometimes like you're ready to work, but you got nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, I, I was watching one of your uh, letting the chickens out with Jim this week and it mm -hmm. was about inspiration. Right. And, and, you know, inspiring others to help you actually, you know, with your own content, you know, it, you, you can inspire more people with the same issues. Like if you, you help one person, right. And that kind of will inspire you to say, you know, I bet more people would need to hear this story or this process that I used with this person that helped, helped them get over this hurdle. Right. And then that, that's a really good way to kind of drive, you know, your content for the, for your next, um, you know, next post or, you know, whatever project you're, that you want to start. 
Yeah. You know, yeah. It could be I a bigger agree. thing. It could be an article. It could be a, could be a whole book, you know, just off one of those little inspiring little nuggets that you use to inspire someone else. And, and so. that's one of those, and that's one of those things we've talked about before, where if you want to learn something really, really well, teach it yeah. to someone else. If you want to refine something and, and that's something I'm going through right now, because like with funnel scripts, so we started doing funnel Fridays again, and, and it's, it's a big deal. I mean, we're getting over, you know, as, as many as 5,000 people there at a pop. But minimum, we're getting between twelve and fifteen hundred there every time. So, if you got to stand and deliver live in front of, you know, in, in this case, it's like a quarter of the population of my town. Um, <laughs> you, you know, if you really want to learn it, you, you then, I mean, you know, it. there's a difference between knowing something and really knowing something, and that's where knowledge becomes, uh, or where information becomes knowledge. And it's through experience and really thinking through and, and doing all the different uh, iterations and everything. But one of the things that's been forcing me to do is, <clears throat> is, to, is to really refine the tools. And as I've grown, I've seen how the things that I put out five years ago were good, but now I look back and it's like, oh man, I can make that so much better. It doesn't mean it stopped working. It just means that I'm learning new situations where we need to have new outputs. And so it's this week we're doing product launch funnels, which entail um, five videos in a sequence. And I'm seeing when we're going through, it's, it's taking me a lot longer to get the share copy done because I'm, I'm seeing how I need to change stuff to meet this specific situation. But on the flip side, it's it's really cool to see the the new stuff um, that's coming out, and I'm I'm excited I'm excited by it. But it also I'm trying to inspire others to. That's why I, what gave me the idea of the inspiration. It's like if I can inspire you to do something where before you thought it was impossible, then then that makes me feel great and it gets me more juice to do even more and more and more and more and more. So, um, yeah, the product launch stuff you want, you want to do is be on funnel Fridays this Friday or is a product funnels. Nice. I need that. Okay. Well then you need to be on funnel Fridays at noon Eastern. Um, you know, on funnel Fridays and you can go to uh, funnelfridays.com and register for this week's webinar or this week's funnel Fridays. Let me just make sure. Um, yeah, funnelfridays.com. And if you, I'll put it in the chat. What is funnel Fridays? It's funny <laughs> you should ask, all right? <laughs> funnel Fridays is not loading right now, but, um. Funnel Fridays is where Russell Brunson and I get on and teach basically a masterclass each Friday on, or the Fridays that we do it about specific types of funnels. Yeah, it's loading now. Um, and then we demo using click funnels to create the funnel and also funnel scripts for writing the sales copy for that. And uh, we, we get more done in about 30 minutes than most people get done in three weeks as far as getting stuff done. Plus, we also give you at least seven professionally designed funnels for that specific topic. You have to show up live to get them, though. Uh, it's a cool business model because it's... Um, it's the the and it forces people to show up live because that's the only way you can get the funnels. Oh. If you don't show up live, you can't get it, and there are no replays. So it's there you go. So it definitely you'd want to be there. And um, anyway, it's just you know forcing me to think through teaching people what to do, um, and and doing it. Um, no, it's not seven topics. You get seven funnels. So we have seven diff totally differently designed. This week we'll have seven totally different designed product launch funnels, but they're all to do a product launch. So anyway, um, cool. 
Well, I think that's it for that. Let's let's transition, Stu. Yep. Unless you wanted to show everybody your cool little um we can do it for your, the podcast. The podcast will show everybody your listicle. Hey, just I love one. seeing Stu's listicles. They're always so well formed. <laughs> oh, stop. You're <laughs> killing me. Hey, uh, just in case you see me go on mute, that's because my dogs got involved with the county who is out in the front yard redoing our our gas pipeline from yeah. the county to the house. Yeah. And they have they may have to come into the house in the next hour. So hopefully they will be done before that. But if you see me go on mute and looking around, it's uh, yeah. because the County is inside my house. If you grab your gun, will it be a burglar? <laughs> no, I got, oh, okay. got everything right here, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, it is just a, uh, just the County guy. I already talked to him outside. So I kind of got a, a heads up. Okay. Yeah. Just want to give right. you a heads up. All Just right. in case. It'll be fine. I thought you were referencing some. I'm, I didn't see anybody making comments. There is no just in case here. There's Justin Benton is here, but there's nobody named just in case. I was like, it took me a second. I know. I'm I'm dorky. Um, okay. Ready? Ready. Three, two, one. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the Sales Copywriting and Content Marketing Hacks podcast. This is episode number 93. I'm your host, Jim Edwards, along with my trusty co-host and podcast producer, Mr. Stu Smith. Welcome, Stu. Thank you, Jim. And today we're going to be talking about what is the biggest issue your ideal customer is dealing with and the main stuff they need to know. How can you help them with their problem? And why should you help them with their problem, Stu? Why well, is this even important? That's what you're in business for. I'm in business to help people solve problems. Uh, you are. I thought I was in business just to make money. <laughs> How do you do that? Oh, well, you what's make the ten, money. What's the 10 ways? 10 ways. Yeah. No, that's the 10 reasons people buy. Yeah. 10 reasons people buy or. But typically yeah. the own, the, it comes down to two things. People buy anything to solve a problem or achieve a result. And ultimately it's. People buy anything to achieve a result, which usually is to solve a problem. I'm hungry. Let me buy a 99 cent burrito. I have to sit in the smallest room in the house because I ate that 99 cent burrito. Okay. Mm. I need soft toilet paper. Um, there's all, anything comes down to basically solving a problem, moving people from where they are now to where they want to be. And once they get where they want to be, guess what, Stu? What? They want to be somewhere else. Ah. Once you, once you, that, here's the thing. I, I don't remember true. who, I think it was Earl Nightingale. I heard say, once you've solved one set of problems, yeah. you've earned the right to solve a new set of problems. And most people think that if they get to a certain income level, if they get to a certain physical fitness level, a certain weight, if they get a certain relationship, a certain car, a certain house, a certain uh, bank account level, I may have said that already, yep. um, uh, income, whatever it is, that mm -hmm. all their problems will disappear. Hmm. And, the and, the, and the true answer is that no, all you're doing is just earning the right to solve a new set of problems. And the day you stop solving problems is the day that you die. So... People will pay money to solve their problems, to have somebody else solve their problems, either show them the path, which is a book. Yep. That's what Stu has behind him, a whole bunch of different books that solve very specific problems in the, uh, in the fitness world. So solving, you know, I want to be a SWAT team member. What do I need to do? I want to get in the military. What do I need to do? I want to be a Navy SEAL. What do I need to do? I want to be an FBI agent. What do I need to do? So the very specific things. Um, I want to torture myself. <laughs> uh, get that one. So, but seriously, it just, you just transition from one set of problems. You basically grow out of one set of problems and grow into another set of problems. People will pay you for knowledge on how to do it. They will pay you to do it for them. That's what a service is. They will pay you to do it with them 
or to coach them through it. So it's basically, I'll tell you what to do personally, I'll do it for you, or I'll show you what to do in some sort of uh, book, or I've got a product, I'm, I've got a product or something that'll do it for you, a product or a tool or a software. But that's, that's pretty much it. That's, those are your, that's, that's how you can trade people money for a solution to their problem. So which problem should you solve, Stu? Which, which, I mean, I can look, you can look at me and see that there are a lot of problems that need solving. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all have, so, them. you know, I'm how do you decide which right one? Now. I got how a plumbing decide? issue right now and I'm trying to figure out, do I just go to YouTube and figure out how to do it? Or do I call a plumber? Now, are you talking metaphorically like a prostate thing, or are you talking <laughs> literally like something no. wrong with a toilet or something? No, legit plumbing problem in that. Okay. House. Yes. Okay. Don't yeah. know. As we get older, we use code words. I wasn't yeah, sure. That is true. Um, no, but uh, you know, the biggest issue that people have is, and that's what you have to do when you're understanding your customer. You know, use that avatar wizard to better understand your customer, you know, because that, that kind of sets it up and asks you the right questions that you need to know how to answer. Right. And then how can you help them with their problem? Whatever that is. Like for instance, I'm working on a, uh, a wizard uh, right now, an, an article that I'm using the list article listicle wizard. Um, and I titled it weaknesses exposed. Because in my line of work, you know, for my customers, if they are failing to prepare, what are they doing? Preparing to fail, right? So, Ooh, I excuse really, me, I He's really, a Yogi Berra. I really focus on, you know, their level of preparation because their weaknesses will be exposed on day one of when they get to their boot camp or selection or spec ops training or whatever that is, their weakness will be exposed. You know, that is something that maybe they neglected. Maybe they didn't work hard enough in a certain area. And guess what? They have to face that daily gut check, you know, every day, maybe every week, whatever. It's going to be an added stress to their um, success. And it may even cause them to not succeed whatsoever, right? They may fail and not be able to continue on because they didn't meet the standard or they didn't prepare themselves well enough. So they weren't durable. So they just fell apart and broke. You know, that's a majority of the issues for most people. They just weren't properly prepared. So anyway, I run, I'm writing an article and you know, all the ideas or secrets or whatever are weaknesses exposed. Right. And so anyway, that's that's what I'm trying to get out. And I realize it's going to take multiple articles to do this because you have weaknesses exposed during the recruitment process. You have weaknesses exposed going through boot camp and prep. And then you got weaknesses exposed going through the actual selection. So all of that crammed in one article was just driving me nuts about how to put that out, you know, in a more consumable form. So I realized it needed to be broken up and using that list wizard really helped me formulate my thinking process um, to spit that out. So anyway, I, I've kind of answered two things with, with one I just let long you paragraph. Yeah. But, you know, I realized what my biggest need for my customer was because I use the avatar wizard. Plus I already know what it is, but the avatar wizard helped me formulate it a little better. Refine it. Yes. And then use that list wizard to help me nail down all the areas where, you know, their potential weaknesses will be exposed. So, so I think, I think one of the things, and I just had this thought, I just want to kick this around for a minute, but we, in the show that we did before we did the podcast, we were talking about getting in flow. And, and one of our listeners, watchers, D Denise said, um, said something about a keystone habit 
where if you activate the keystone habit, then it activates a habit chain. Yeah. And it may, it makes me think, you know, and this isn't necessary for everything that you're doing, but if you can, if you can, uh, and I've talked about goals in the past where there are certain goals that if you focus on that goal, that action, that it brings a lot of other things along with it. So like for me, the goal work out every single day, uh, as hard as I can, as best I can, you know, towards the, the goal of, of tactical fitness. And so I know that by doing that, it helps to bring along my self-esteem, my self-confidence. It keeps me calm. It gives me a feeling of accomplishment. There are all these things that come along with taking that action with that goal that I, it, it, like everything falls into the slipstream of that. As opposed to the opposite of sitting on the couch, not exercising, eating bad stuff and make it, you know, that that's going to lower your self-esteem, which is going to impact your health. It's going to impact your well-being, all these things that instead of moving forward, you're going down into a deep pit. So depending on what you're selling if you think about it from the standpoint of if you can identify, I'm just going to coin this. And if it's a real, if it's a real thing, great, I made it up and somebody else did it. But, um, but a keystone problem, it's like a log jam. If, if you think about it, my buddy, uh, Duke Clark was the first one I'd ever seen explain it like this, but there are certain problems that are like log jams in your life. And if you've ever seen a log jam on a river, uh, and I have before, um, you know, when I lived in California, you know, they're cutting off trees and they slide them down into the river and they float them down to the sawmill. But every once in a while, there's a log jam. That's where the term comes from. But typically to get the log jam going, there's one log that needs to get moved. And often they can get the one log out of the way and then everything <laughs> starts flowing. Now, another one, you know, you get that one going and another one causes a log jam. You got to get that one out of the way and then they start flowing. But after a while, once you get those logs out of the way and get everything going, it flows on down the river to the, to the sawmill. And I think that there are certain problems that are the, the ones that, everything flows from that if you can solve that problem for somebody it will create either a single solution that just solves everything or it starts people down the river to being able to get ultimately what they want and they'll have to go through different a, a series of things so if we look at the problem of we'll use the problem of the of the person getting ready for let's say going to buds and you said the number one reason why people fail is because they're just not conditioned well enough, either physically or mentally, but, but the mental is also linked inextricably to the physical. Sure. Because if you're physically ready, then you're not stressed all the time. Like, holy crap, we got the four mile time to run tomorrow. And I'm feel like I've got um, fr stress fractures in my shins and how the hell am I going to run? four miles on a beach in under 32 minutes tomorrow. And, and so they don't sleep. Whereas the, right. the, the night before, which you're just totally screwed. Whereas the one guy who's like, I was doing this in Severna park with Stu Smith, <laughs> uh, doing this. I can do this in my sleep. I'm fine. This is just another workout. I've done workouts that were harder than this and, and done well with them that. So if you can communicate to them that that's the level you need to get to, um, as far as understanding the problem and then telling people, com communicating it to them in a way that they can actually understand and then say, okay, now this is the problem you either have, or this is the problem you're going to have. And yeah. if this is the problem you have here, here's why it's a problem now and why it's an, it's an immediate concern. And then here's a path that I can help you so that you basically have two futures. Now I'm starting to get into the copy. It's, yes. you know, it's like the, the guy, the, the old wall street journal ad, you know, here's, here, there are two guys, you know, they're so-and-so's a, a president. The other one's a mid-level manager. What's the difference between them? Well, about 10 years ago, 
the president subscribed to the Wall Street Journal and read that every day. And the mid-level manager did the crossword puzzle with his paper every with the in the local paper every morning. Mm. So for 10 years, this guy was getting this and this and this and this and this and this. Okay, now a tale of two SEAL candidates. Okay. One guy is at graduation as the honor man. The other one is gone in the second week with IT band, which, which stands for I tried buds. <laughs> okay. So what was the difference? Well, the difference was six months before or a year before the honor grad was doing workouts that were harder than what he was experiencing in buds. Whereas the other one was trying to meet the minimum standards of, okay, well, in order to get a buds contract, I only have to do 10 pull-ups and 40 push-ups and mm. 50 sit-ups and run a mile and a half in 12 minutes. So, I mean, that the, the problem that you want to get down to is the reason people fail is because their bodies aren't tough enough. Because if your body's tough enough, you'll be, everybody thinks it's a mental thing. They want to go, they get used to taking cold showers. They do, mm, they, they yeah. jump in cold water. They, they do all this other stuff, but that, what they don't realize is that the mental stress comes from the physical stress, not the other way around. Absolutely. So what you need to do is be in such crazy great shape that, that you're laughing when, when, when they're messing with you, because you're like, I got this. I've done this. I've done harder than this before. Yeah. And the thing is, is like, if you have built up yourself to a certain level, you don't have to engage mental toughness, right? It, it's right. not even part of the challenge, right? You don't have to like, oh man, I'm, I'm about to fail. I need to really dig deep to make this happen. Right. So anyway, that's one of the problems of, of my world. And I really like what you guys are talking about. The keystone habit thing is one thing that Jim does all the time. And he, I mean, letting the chickens out with Jim is a great example. I mean, he has a keystone habit of letting the chickens out every day, right? But he got the idea of, I need to add some content to my day. And he started videotaping and having a little discussion while he let the chickens out. So right. he just tied a new habit to an existing habit right? and just merged them together. That's and what we're talking I, about. Too. And as long yeah. as I have time to get it done, I get it done. But sometimes you just got to get it done really fast. Yeah. But Denise just said something interesting that I want to hit on. She said, you're, gonna, you're going too deep. The keystone problem is within, but people like to find the problem without, external. Absolutely. Nobody wants you to tell them that they're stupid, lazy, or dumb, or ignorant, or um, or anything it can't be their fault and that's something that the the first copywriter I ever heard talk about that was dan kennedy who said that it's never their fault you've always got to let them off the hook so that internally they can um they can know that it's their fault and secretly they do know that it's their fault that they they gave up on too many workouts they you know they didn't do that extra thing they should have gotten done from their to-do list by the end of the, um, you know, at, by, by the end of the day that they knocked off too early and they started too late, but you got to tell them that it's not their fault and, and you got to show them how it's, it's an external issue or externalize the issue for them so that you can give them the solution. But in the end, you have to create circumstances so that they will make that internal change, even if they don't realize that they have made an internal change. Does that make sense? So you almost have to ethically trick them into doing what they should do. It's it's kind of like when my I'm trying to get my dogs to come back here, but I know I shouldn't give them a snack. Oh, that is but. Good. But if I shake the bag, they come running. And so I'll maybe give them a half a snack, which they're just as happy with a half as a full. It's not like they're tapping their feet going, whoa, 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 whoa. I wanted a whole bone. You know, it's like, oh, we're getting something. Okay. I mean, it's it's understanding what drives them, but it, it can't be, you, you got to lead them. You can't push them. And so that's, I'm not. 
I'm not really what? sure exactly how to, what, what am I trying to say? Well, here, I, I will say this, you know, a lot of your wizards that I use to write articles and copy always has that little question comment spot in there where it lets people off the hook. Right. This is not your fault because. Right. <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> yeah. that's, a, yeah. you know, and, and that is part of, you know, you have, you have that in your system. Right. So it, I mean, it, you're, you're right. It is natural. Hey, something I just saw that was really funny. Sunita oh. does not have chickens, but she has dishes that need out of the dishwasher. There so you I'm go. Thinking, letting the dishes out with Sunita. Letting, yeah. Or, or, <laughs> or unloading the dishwasher. Kitchen, the you know, dishwasher. kitchen wisdom. <laughs> Unload um, the dishwasher with Sunita. I like and, it. You know, something with, you know, we're getting some really good. This is this is really good. We're getting some great comments. Um, Denise says you get them on the path and they'll figure it out. I th I think to a degree that's true. And most people are stuck in self blame. It, when there's a problem, they're they're either blaming themselves or they're vehemently blaming other people. They're cursing mm -hmm. the world, competitors, um, someone that has wronged them in some way. And, and subconsciously, or maybe even less than consciously, they know that somehow it's their fault, but they're never, ever going to admit it even to themselves. So if you try and make them think the problem is their fault, they're, they're just going to get pissed they're, and, and shut down. So what you have to do as a service to them is show them how or give them an out so that they can move forward because they're vapor locked on an idea. Give you an example. I don't typically like to watch commercials because my wife complains that why do we have a TiVo and Hulu and all this other stuff where we can skip over it and you know you get your 40 minutes worth of content from a 60 minute show. But I do like to watch commercials sometimes especially if it's real eye catching to see what the um you know, just to see the patterns that they use and always makes me happy when I'm like, okay, now they're going to say, and, and they do. And it's like, yeah, kind of like movies when I predict them based on the, the hero's journey, but yeah. there's a weight loss commercial. I don't remember the brand, but it basically says, if you've tried to lose weight in the past, you've tried the diets, you've tried the, this, you've tried the, that, and it hasn't worked. It's not your fault. You may have something called insulin resistance have you seen this have I you have. seen the ad yeah. where it's where it it prevents your body from burning fat so it's like oh yeah that must be it um, nom, 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 nom. <laughs> you know with a cheeseburger in one hand a large fry but a diet coke sitting mm. there um and and it's like yeah i got the insulin resistance thing um but if you could get them off and, and then there's always that little flip and a mentor of mine um, um, who, who just, he wrote all the guerrilla marketing books, Jay Conrad Levinson. Um, he and I were talking one day and he said, Jim, I have a friend that's got a best-selling diet book. And basically it comes down to the fact that you need to walk 30 minutes a day and get two tablespoons of fiber in your diet and watch what you eat. That's how you lose weight. Mm. But you have to expand it out to 200 pages in order to get a book out of that. Mm. But he, it, it basically came down to just letting people off the hook, but then getting them into doing the things that they should do. So all of us need to identify the the problem and, and let's call it now the keystone problem. Yeah. Identify the keystone problem that if you were to identify it would be able to um, get people off the mark and be able to start getting results towards the goal that they're trying to get. And if you think about with copywriting, what's the keystone problem with copywriting is I don't I don't know where to start and I don't need, I know copywriting when I see it, but I don't know how to create it for myself or my own products because I'm not a salesperson. There's all these things. So it's basically, I don't know how to start. And so that's why copywriting secrets, funnel scripts, the Jim Owens method premium, traffic secret scripts, author wizards, all these different things that we've created 
the whole point is everybody can answer questions about their target audience. Everybody can answer questions about their topic. But what those tools do is they take what you know and they automatically marry it up with what you don't know, which are patterns for how to communicate. And then it gives you a first draft that you can look at and go, oh, let me edit it and boom, I've got it. And you're going to get it a lot faster, a lot easier, and a lot quicker. So I've been pretty good at at identifying the keystone problem for my folks with sales copywriting and content is I know my audience and I know my topic, but I don't know how to put it in a way that will sell them and motivate them to buy from me. Hey, how about this question from Brandon? What do you do when you made so many products and he has 21 of them that you feel like all your problems, your, your niche has been solved? Um, that's fine. Sell the crap out of everything you've already got. Yeah, but always be selling. Yeah, but I would I would think in terms of a progression. Typically, there's one product that is the it's like the tip of the spear. It's the tip of the spear product that that gets people into your orbit, so you can tell them about the other stuff. So you've got to you've got to arrange everything into funnels and progressions of funnels. Yeah. Um, that's, that's key because otherwise you've just got these 21 spin, 21 plates you're trying to spin all the time to try and sell stuff. And that's real hard to keep all that going. You, you need to have the thing that you're known for in the marketplace. And then once that gets people in, they're in your universe and can find out about your stuff. Hey, Vicky asked me, uh, how many, how often do I publish a new book? Um, if you don't mind me answering, I will. Let's see. I did two last year. I did three the year before, but in 2018, yeah, yeah, 2020, I've done two. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, 2018, I did eight in one year. That was a busy year, but mm-hmm. they were, they were series books. So it was, once again, it was, would have been one, two really big books. But I just divided them up into, you know, four part series. But yeah, cool. I try to I try to get one or two a year done, and then spend the rest of my days trying to sell it. Well, there you go. Yeah. Mister Khan says I've ordered your book yesterday. I hope it will be enlightened. I I hope to be enlightened about copywriting. Anybody? think that he will be enlightened about copywriting? I hope so. Yes. I think we've, I think we're up around 41, 42,000 people have gotten the book around the world. So hopefully you will. No, that's great. Cool. So that's pretty much it for today's podcast. Uh, That was fun. And I think we made some discoveries. I'm going to, I'm going to noodle this around the keystone problem. Uh, I think that's, 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 that's something worth thinking about. So if you yeah. enjoyed today's podcast, please like, share, comment, uh, let everybody know about it. Also, if you're not a member of our group, you should be. Head on over to the Sales Copywriting Content Marketing Hacks group on Facebook. It's free to get in, but you do have to apply. Make sure you fill out the form all the way and agree not to be a spammer or a weirdo. Uh, well, th- that's not right. Agree not to be a spammer. We'll all we're all kind of weirdos in there, but we're we're friendly weirdos. <laughs> so there you go. We're helpful. We every, helpful. Everybody is very helpful. Every question I see usually has five or six people at least commenting or saying try this, try that, adjust this. I mean, exactly. Yeah, it's a very helpful group. It's a very very good group. Uh, If you want to learn about copywriting, make sure you head on over to Copywriting Secrets. Pick up a copy of my book, Copywriting Secrets. You can get it free. Just pay a small shipping and handling. And uh, Stu, if people want to go to Bud's, what can they do? (laughs) Well, there's so many other places to go, but uh, yes, uh, stusmithfitness.com. All right. Okay, everybody. Well, we appreciate you. Have a great day and we will see you next time on the Sales Copywriting Content Marketing Hacks podcast.